Hola, buen día, Munson here. What's happened to my background? It's the big bang behind me. That's not right. It's very attractive, but it's not right. So let, let me put that right first. Hello, hello, buen día. There's a seamless transition there. There is the uh, traditional good morning Portugal backdrop green screen. Enjoy life in Portugal with Carl Munson. That's me. Weekdays, 9 a.m. That's this time. Yikes. Here we are on the Good Morning Portugal show. So, bon dia, alegria to you. A few people are here already. Francis Joel was here very early this morning. And um, fair to say, I did schedule the show for nine o'clock this evening, but thanks to everybody who wasn't thrown by that. And apologies to anybody who does tune in at nine this evening. Hi from Francis Joel. How are you this morning, Francis? Uh, many fans of Gilda, of course. Monday is the visa update and a special uh, talk with our cultural, um, well, our cultural advisor, Gilda Pereira, advising us on all aspects of Portuguese life. That, actually, those are my favorite bits of the conversation between you and me, finding out how, how to make the right impression in Portugal and learning about Portuguese culture. We are going to learn what to do when you go to a Portuguese person's house and how best not to offend them. It's a really great question, I think, this morning. Uh, yes, yeah, so lots of fans for Gilda. Uh, one of our biggest fans will be Jim White. Bon dia, Gilda and Carl from Jim in Baltimore. El Rolinda, good morning, everyone. Uh, Louise uh, Solo, 50 plus, expat Portugal, bon dia. Oh, happy Monday. Thank you very much. Paul Richards, great pictures on Facebook. Greetings from San Rafael in Central Algarve, where friends are easy. Here we, here we go. Where friends are easy to make and from all nationalities. So come on down. We're waiting for you. A few more greetings to come, but let's not do too many of those before we welcome onto the screen, Gilda Pereira. Here she is. Oh, there she was. <laughs> We've lost her. Uh, what's happening here? We've uh, well, we'll wait for her to come back. I think we've lost the connection. So let's carry on with those um, those greetings this morning. Stephen Wells, bon dia to you, my friend. I'm quite perky for a Monday, aren't I? Probably annoyingly so. Bon dia from an overcast pavor de Virgin from Mark. Hey, Mark. Hey, Stephen. And a Facebook user. Oh, oh that's, that's from uh, our dear friend Druba coming in as Facebook user this morning uh, from Sintra. Bon dia, Carl, and Toros from Sintra's farming family. I haven't had a chance to look at that video yet, Druba, but I will do. Don't you worry. Uh, P. Anne Jackson, bon dia de Londres, uh, de, from Anne and Claire. Good morning, Anne and Claire, this morning. And how is London um, on Freedom Day in London? Uh, is it any different how it's been in the last couple of weeks or months? Um, hola, bon dia, from a strangely cool morning here in Peñascos. Peña I'll do that again. Here in Peñascos. I think that's right, isn't it? Happily settled in now and hope to get a bit of normality in our lives. You'll be lucky, Paul. Um, this, yeah, normal. That ended ages ago, didn't it? We're in the new world of freedom, which has both its upsides and its downsides. But, um, yeah, how's it going there? In uh, We'll call that uh, Peñascosho. How am I doing with that pronunciation, Paul? Well, I'm so glad to see you. the photos of you settled in your new home, uh, getting, the, getting first things first, getting things right with the food, I think. That's your priority, it would appear to be in your household, which I think is absolutely right. Uh, bon dia, Mr. Carl Munson. Very formal this morning. Thank you, Alyssa. Um, excellent to be talking to you over the weekend, and thank you for that recipe last week. We will do the um, the chicken recipe uh, sometime this week as well, so I appreciate that. Might even do that this morning, actually. It'd be a good idea. We used to have Frank. Remember Frank? He used to talk about food. I do miss food on a Monday. Uh, bon dia de Maastricht from Magdalena Hansma. Uh, hello, Magdalena. How are you? And how's ha Maastricht this morning? Awful um, scenes coming from uh, Northern Europe, from Germany, Belgium and the Netherlands. Um, and our friend uh, Jim McDonald, uh, quite close to where these awful floods, landslides and so on are taking place. So, um, yeah, awful situation. And uh, love to you if you and your family have been affected by that. And love to the people there who are, are getting their lives back together again after those terrible uh, floods. Uh, Anna Olsen, bon dia from a warm and sunny Stockholm this morning. Excellent. Uh, morning from Head Gardener McGrady, who, of course, will be here at 6.15 later on. This is it's never been a better time to get out and grow. And he helps people with their gardening questions. The gardening QA from 6.15 tonight. She's back. It's great. Uh, I had a little moment there, a little worry uh, that you disappeared <laughs> altogether there, Gilda. Did you do that to me on purpose? I don't know what happened. Uh, I, I, I ran out of the internet with my computer. Now I'm with my phone. I'm sorry no, about that. No, it's not, not at all. Not at all. We, we, coped, we coped well um, with, with that. And um, yeah, I, it was, it's, it, I, well, the last picture I saw of you, you were on your screen like this. And I was thinking, oh, Gilles is meditating. She's getting into a Zen-like a zen like mind frame before joining us on the show. Good morning to you. Hola, bon dia. Tudo bem? Bom dia, bom dia a todos. Happy Monday. Absolutely, absolutely. And it looks very bright and sunny where you are. Uh, on the, uh, are you on the, which side of the water are you on this morning? 
Are you in town in, in the city? No, no, no. Okay. I mean, Seychelles. South side. Yes. Okay. All yeah. right. It looks very bright and, and sunny there this morning. Yeah, it is. It is. But I, I, when I look to Lisbon, uh, I can see Lisbon from here. It's dark. Oh, it's really? Mm -hmm. That's unusual, isn't it? Because you get the great view from south of the river of the beautiful colours of, of, of the Lisbon, um, what's it called? The Lisbon landscape. But not this morning by the sound of it. No, it's a little bit dark if we look. Yeah. Dark. Okay, so we'll, let's get into it this morning. I know you're a busy lady. We all know that. Uh, but you, you help us on a Monday. Bit of a visa update. If there's anything anybody wants to know about visas, do pop those questions in the comments. But I loved this question. Uh, from somebody on uh, the um, the Facebook groups are just so informative and hilarious, uh, aren't they? In equal measure, I think. First time abroad, so please pardon my ignorance, asks this correspondent or says this correspondent and then asks, I'll be spending some time at the homes of former Portuguese diplomats during my time here in Lisbon. This is the key question for you this morning, Gilda. And this is something we all want to know because we will hopefully be entering the homes of Portuguese people. I don't know if, if there'll be diplomats or not, but it'll be the same sort of idea. Yeah. Is there anything customary that I should be aware of when going to people's homes, i.e. bring a gift, uh, take your shoes off, leave them on? What should, what should we do when we enter the home of a Portuguese person, please? Uh, well, the Portuguese don't have the the habitude of taking the shoes off. Oh, okay. So First. you should keep your shoes. Please okay? keep your shoes on. Okay, it would be weird. Uh, and then um, when you go to when you are invited to go to someone's house, um, uh, you can you always take wine. Okay, like wine is mandatory. You take a bottle of wine. <laughs> you yes. take a bottle of wine um, or a porto. Or a yeah. porto, and you yeah. and you give to the gentleman, and you oh. take uh, either flowers or chocolates, and yes. you give to to the lady. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you know how to cook a dessert, uh, it's always welcome if you bring a dessert. Oh, anything else? Sleepy bag? <laughs> no, that would be all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Um... Uh, and it's but, always... but it's funny because sometimes when it, when we go out to, with friends, you know, my husband says, are, are we going to spend the weekend because I take <laughs> many things, you know, many bottles and then the cakes. Yes, that's and then... yes. Yeah. so the trolley um, with you. Um, yeah. So we've got, we've got let's, let's break those down then one by one. Um, wine, always an interesting thing with wine, isn't it? Because you should, I don't think you should show off and be ostentatious and sort of take something too expensive necessarily, or doesn't it matter? I mean, and definitely you don't want to be buying anything too cheap, do you? Um, because, you know, no, but, uh, it, a lot of experts. It, it should be balanced, not too okay. expensive and not too cheap. Yeah. And, well, so and you, you know, and if, if the people, um, if the person that is um, receiving you, um, it is polite to open the wine that you that you gave, okay, and oh, you and well. you taste them together, okay. But sometimes it can happen that the wine doesn't match the food, and the people would say, "Oh, excuse me, but uh, we will leave this wine for later because it doesn't match the the food we are eating." But uh, it is supposed that the the person opens the wine that uh, that you bring, uh, and yeah. you all taste it together. So if it's too cheap, it's not going to look good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that. Yeah, they're not just going to put it in their present drawer or take it to the next party they go to. It may, you may well have to drink it, so bear that in mind. <laughs> but sometimes it happens uh, when we don't have time to drink because there are too many guests and too many bottles. We take yeah. the same bottles to the next party. <laughs> it, could, it could go around completely a full circle. Yeah. <laughs> you can, hold on a bit. I think I remember buying that. No, yeah, yeah, ago. but it's it's it, you need to keep in mind sometimes. Okay, who gave us this? Da -da 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 -da. I usually get have a good memory, so um, it comes easy. So I I don't make that mistake. Oh, I right, try not write, to make that mistake. Right in pencil on the bottle, couldn't you, just to see where it, <laughs> where, it, where it's gone? Uh, okay, and and so what? I quite the sense I get is the Portuguese people are rightly proud of their wine, so it might be good to have a little bit of a backstory. So you know, for me, when I lived in the Barada region, I would always take something from the Barada and say, look, you know, this is this is from my doorstep, basically. So a little bit of a backstory is good as well. Yes, it is. It is. 
Yeah. Okay. Excellent. There is a place that I that I always go on uh, from time to time. I go in Alentejo, and mm-hmm. and they make wine, and uh, uh, it's not uh, it's not all for sale on the supermarkets because it's a small production. But mm. the wine is very good. So uh-huh. sometimes when uh, I, I every time I go there, I bring a lot of bottles, and I give I give those when when I go to people's house. And yes, there is a background. There is. A story and we tell and then we drink the wine i'm loving this okay we are getting a few contributions coming in and um yes normal is so last century it's that's so true so lee yes lee will be here at 6 15 that's great uh, he's off to have a busy day and he'll be joining us he, he puts his feet up as a beer and talks to us about gardening which is fantastic uh, house sitting in the algarve next month is louise so looking forward to that hospitality it better live up to all this picture he's been painting hadn't it uh, all these last two weeks algarve this algarve that anyone would think he's a big fan uh, bon dia todos uh, from Ron in Cascais. Loving how you, you put in the Portuguese in there, Ron. Thank you. Fantastic. Cascais, I'm sure, is looking fabulous this morning. Yeah, normal is last century, darling, uh, from Lu- Louise there. Um, Matthias, hey, good morning. Bon dia todos to Amsterdam. Uh, Amsterdam. We got you on the forum finally. That's fantastic, uh, Matthias. Uh, bon dia from a cooler Alcabasa. In every sense of the word, I suspect, they're temperature-wise. And it is a very cool place to be. They had a fantastic market there over the weekend. I uh, saw the picture. Thank you, Pam. Bon dia, Carl. Survived the fire. Yes, sadly, massive fire in the Algarve yeah. weekend as well, yeah, which appears to be under control. Uh, but they're concerned, of course, that the wind might whip it up again. So fingers crossed for um, safety down there in the Algarve. Um, who's Frank? Good question. Yeah, uh, you might remember him. <laughs> he used to hang around around here on a Monday morning, on a Friday evening, missing in a, missing it in Algarve still. Uh, but we look forward to speaking to him soon. Uh, what? What? Were you sharing recipes? Yeah, we did a recipe. We did tomato rice, and we may well do if I can find it. Or Alyssa, if you can send me the link to your chicken recipe, we'll do that later on this morning um, after we've uh, sent uh, Gilles on our way good morning from Arganil district of Coimbra beautiful river beach Goish Arganil great place central Portugal from Ze Campos there uh, Magdalena very wet in Maastricht but luckier than most around you absolutely um, Magdalena Paul um, you will friends and sunshine in the Algarve okay so where are these cultural and visa questions oh here we go uh, Matthias says I'm an EU citizen German living in the Netherlands wondering if the D7 visa is something I can apply for as it comes with some tax benefits I probably won't have otherwise uh, just moving as an EU citizen you can't do that can you Jill? do you can't no, do a you can't. visa uh, if you're a Schengen uh, person if you are if you are an European citizen you cannot apply uh, for the D7. The D7, it's not applicable to you. Okay, yeah. but the good news is you can still apply for the NHR. There you go, Matthias. So we can yeah. we can get you a reduced tax. I say we. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is, it's best left for <laughs> the Yes, we, 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 are, yeah. we are. We are family. Yeah, we are family. I got my, I got my sister Gilda with me. Yes, <laughs> okay. Um, so there you go. So go for NHR, but don't mess about with the D7. You know, you're EU citizen. Yeah, don't, Make don't. It's, it's, not, it's not for you. And yeah. and, and the, the thing is, you, you come to Portugal, you have you apply for your NIF, your tax number. We can do that on your behalf. You open a Portuguese bank account. You find a place to stay. When you find a place to stay, you make your registration as an European citizen living in Portugal. And with that registration, we can take care of your changing of tax residency to Portugal and apply to the NHR. So there you go. Simple steps. I mean, and this is there's a 90 day limit on that, is there? You've got to you've got to if you stay longer yes. than 90 days, yes. you have to do that anyway, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. You can do it before. It, yeah, and you can do it before. It was so easy. It's what British people used to enjoy. But I'm not going to rub that in yeah. this morning. Uh, let's come <laughs> home. Yes, I remember Frank. Is he back from the? No, I, I think he's gone there for good. A bit like uh, in Apocalypse Now, uh, where Marlon Brando ends up in the hills. Um, that's it's pretty much what Frank's done in the Algarve. Uh, Tatoro, that's a very um, colloquial greeting, isn't it? You good? Uh, yeah. From Andre there. Thank you very much for a tatodo from you. Tatodo. Uh, always bring wine, plenty of it. Okay, so going back to this excellent information this morning. Yeah, when turning up at a Portuguese house, take wine, plenty of it. Whether you're a drinker or not, I, I'm not drinking this year, as you may have heard. I'm still going to be taking wine, though, when I go to someone's house. And I've got to do that clip, Gilda, of your face where, 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 did, where we did the interview. And I said, I'm not drinking for a year. I don't agree with you. I huh? don't even understand why. Yeah, you thought it might be injurious to my health, even as well. Yeah. But yeah, okay. I was worried. Okay, 
<laughs> I've only got, I think, maybe 350 odd days to go. Um, Mat Matuzinho this morning, Joel is there, bon dia, and he's got something to say about this as well. Um, sleeping bag, not necessary. Um, and this is interesting. You might want to comment on this. And you will unleash the Portuguese fury, and nobody wants that if you put it in the fridge. Is that the sleeping bag or the wine or what? No, What's it's that? the wine. It's the wine if you put the wine in the fridge. Don't go into other people's fridges. Is that the message? Uh, no, it's because many people like to put red wine on the fridge and we hate that. Yes, why? of course you do. I mean, there's no reason to do that unless it's... But unless... many people do it. Many people just come with the red wine and want to put it on the fridge because it's, it's the weather is warm and they want to drink uh, uh, red wine. Um, Cool. You have, glass, you have a glass of water, right? If you can, if you need that. <laughs> yeah. And then but some I mean, people do it, so so I understand that comment. Yes, and they are on a list somewhere, aren't they? In the um, in the various uh, consulates or embassies, they are on a special <laughs> list of people who put red wine in the fridge. It will not be forgotten. <laughs> Don't should, do that. It should be. <laughs> Gary is here. Ponte alegria a Gary, stick around because um, we. I think we've answered this story. There's a hotel in the Algarve that wants pictures of Paul McCartney, who played there in, a prompt, in an impromptu concert. And I think you were involved in this. 1968, that goes back to. I think I've, I've unearthed the picture. We've also got pictures of dolphins in the Tejo to show you later on, so stick around for that, folks. Phil Cookland here. Hola, bon dia, alegria. Uh, ice cubes, as usually it's done in the UK. So no ice cubes in the wine either? Uh, only if those are uh, the same uh, wine cubes some people do it you know if you want to cook, oh. you open one one bottle of wine and you do some ice cubes with that wine and then oh, you put idea. in the wine that you are drinking that oh, is okay yes. yes that's the way to do it what a great idea i never thought of that but not mm -hmm. water come on that's just no, not, not water no I never do that good morning everyone great to see you Gilda from gemini oh, oh, that would be the <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even drink morning all from nigel good morning nigel maxine's here as well from london hey maxine um elra i was once asked to put lemonade on oh port and lemon port and that's come on not sure i was able to disguise my disgust that's another no-no there we're learning a lot this morning so somebody put lemonade in the porto mm. <clears throat> not good right no. No, it doesn't look good. It's like no. ruining the, the lemonade and ruining the port wine. Yeah. But we were we were going to have some tips how to make friends in Portugal. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. We'll, we will come back. <laughs> Is the Friday <laughs> night club still happening? Yes, Nigel, under new management. Um, I need a long-term visa to be able to work. I'm now living in Portugal. I have my NIF attestado and bank account. Where do I need to apply for my visa? You need to apply in the consulate of your of your home country, dear. This is an EU person, though, I think, right? So can they not just go to their camera or seek your professional services? Oh, she's, if she's an EU, EU person, she doesn't need a visa. Yep, so there you go. You don't need a visa. You just need to register. Yeah. Um, but uh, check check with um, check check with Gilda and team uh, just to get the final confirmation on that. I'll put the link to uh, Gilda and team in the business directory. Okay, so there we go. This is coming back to your question, which you're keen to answer, Gilda, or my question. What's the best way to become more Portuguese and less British and make Portuguese friends? Sounds to me like you've got a bit of a list of do's and don'ts there. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking about it uh, since you told me you wanted to bring this subject and many people are asking me also. And what I say is, oh, I'll go to Expatsport to go and they'll take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it's because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not having um, a, a very uh, many time to socialize these days because of COVID and because of the work. But... Um, mm -hmm. But I made an effort to to remember how was it before and how how we would do it, okay? Yeah, and also because I was I was an immigrant, I know uh, how I did it to to meet new people and to have new friends when I was in a different country, okay? Yeah. And most of the Portuguese will understand that because many of them, like me, they migrated in in the past years, okay? Almost all the Portuguese is migrated before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so they will understand. One thing you should you should do if you want to make friends in Portugal is that you should go to the coffee uh, next in your neighborhood, like every day at the same hour, because you will meet the same people. 
Very they good. They will be there. Yes. And and once you go there for more than uh, five times, uh, the attendants will know you and will start bringing the things that you that you like without you uh, even asking. So oh. you can start. Yeah, we can start chatting with the people that work there and the people that are there every day, because the Portuguese like routines with um, with their with their coffee. They always go to the same place and they always go at the same hour and they always bring the same people. Uh, so if you go to the your neighborhood uh, coffee coffee shop at the same hour, uh, it's a very good way to to make friends. Okay, that's great, excellent. Yeah, for the ladies, it's ver a very good way to make friends. It's go to the same hairdresser uh, yeah. at the same day. Yeah, it's a very you know I I know many people from my hairdresser, and I also have many clients that that I I met on on the hairdresser. <laughs> I think it's the same for men. To be fair, if you get, if you get a barber, yeah. that is the center of culture, isn't it? And 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 hairdressers know so much. Be, be, if I may add something in there, um, this is also a way to lose friends, if I may make a message to hairdressers <sighs> in Portugal. Because what the, the time I went to a, a, a lady's hairdresser to have a, a haircut, these, the, the hairdresser said to me, have you thought about having a hair transplant? And I was quite, <laughs> offended, I was quite offended. But that, I discovered she's actually a neighbour of yours, I think. She's from, are all people in Sejal like that? Quite direct? Uh, no, the Portuguese are like that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's they true. They are quite direct. The yeah, so she didn't, like anything, she didn't mean anything bad by it. It was just no, like no. She's just she's just basically. telling what what she thinks. Consumer advice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just be prepared for that directness as well. I think. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yes. And don't and make a new make a new honest friend in that person. Yeah, and mm. and also if if your town has a club, almost all the towns have have a club. You know, it's very yes. good to join the club and to support the club and the sports and the activities that the club does. Yeah, okay. that is a, an awesome way of making friends. Yes. Okay, to help the the clubs, uh, the local clubs with their activities because they have games and they have parties when parties are allowed. Um, yeah. And 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 it, it's very important. Sometimes when I go to Alentejo, I go to the local clubs, or when I spend my my holidays in the Algarve, I I also go to the local clubs to support them. Uh, and and because they have good food and they are very nice. Yeah, uh, it, and, and it's good, and good and cheap. Yeah. Good and cheap. Good and cheap and local food. local stuff, local people. Yeah, Fantastic. yeah. Okay, yeah. well, I'm doing quite well on your checklist because if I think about it, local local club association cafe check. I went I went there with the kids, got some gelados. We've been back and we've had a good time. The kids are learning, you know, speaking Portuguese with the guy in there, Ricardo. And then the local restaurant, which has just opened up, we make, we try and go there every week. These these are important things, but that that's a new thing to me. Going at the same time, because then people can get a sense of your health as well. Can't they? So if you say, you know, after a while, fifth time, you know, a cafe or medelet e torada, and you say, <clears throat> no, no, uh, risotto camarada. It's like, whoa, what's happened to you? Why are yeah. you why are you yeah. not having toast this morning? Is everything exactly. okay? Yeah, yeah good. Exactly. So very very good. <laughs> <clears throat> and I think we can have us like a soap opera one day maybe with a cafe like this like cheers or friends and it could be this group of expats who go to the cafe at the same time every day and it's going to be amazing so we'll have to pitch that to a tv company anything else gilda for for um you've got to go haven't you make just finally then make it making friends in portugal yeah if you have kids it's also easy to put kids on uh, activities and then when you are watching the kids on the activities the parents are chatting and mm -hmm. most likely you will end up um, booking a dinner together yes yes and then you know what to do i mean and, and is that do i take it that that's quite a rite of passage or a milestone in relationships when you get invited to portuguese people's homes they really have accepted you, right? Because they don't throw that around, do they? they don't do no, that they don't throw that around, okay? Yeah. Yeah. First, you like you go for a coffee, and yeah. then you go for a lunch or a dinner out, and then only like on the fourth or fifth uh, getting together, you are invited for, for people's home. Yeah, very, very But good. a very good tip, a very yeah. good tip is that uh, if you move to a building... Uh, you should go and introduce yourself, like door to door. Um, oh. Yeah, and 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 explain. I'm from 
I'm from England. I've just arrived. I'm yeah. I'm going to be living on the third floor. If you need anything, let me know. That is very good. Uh, we among the Portuguese, we do that also. Yeah. So and then do it in Portuguese, and then after about two minutes of you doing your best Portuguese, probably somebody in the in the flat downstairs will say, <laughs> "I'm very pleased to meet you. Thank you very much." <laughs> Talk English now. If you need to. Um, but yeah, yeah, get, yeah. No, but I was saying that we among the Portuguese we do that. Yes. Uh, well, that, that's a great idea. I mean, that's just good manners, isn't it? That's fantastic. Yeah, it's a good manner. It's uh, it's people knowing that they have a good neighborhood, uh, a good na uh, new neighbor, and yeah. and that maybe they can help you. And and it's it's very funny because I had this client uh, that uh, she turned up to be uh, neighbors uh, of um, of a cousin of mine in Lisbon. Ah. <laughs> They made a yeah. connection. Yeah, yeah, amazing. I okay. didn't make a connection. They they connected like yeah. this, you know. She she went there and she said, "Hello, I'm from Brazil. I've been living here now." Uh, da, 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 da. And then um, and then at some point she invited them for a wine at at her place, and they went there. And then when she was talking about the process, uh, she she brought my name up. And then he was, no, she's my cousin. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. <clears throat> but that really yeah. helps. It's so reassuring when you're in a new country to make these connections. So, Gilda, so thank neighbor, you. So neighbors are very important. Hairdressers Absolutely. and statisticians are very important. The Portuguese are very, they like have um, a thing with the nails, you know? Oh, okay, yeah. This is for the woman. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Portuguese have a thing with nails. Nails always need to be perfect. Okay, everybody goes to the to take care of the nails. So this is a tip if you are arriving in Portugal for the ladies that you should take care of your nails. I see. Everybody's going to look at your nails. Okay, okay. And we are is very picky with that. Well, that's very interesting. And so you would tell a lot about a woman by the, the condition of her nails then? Yes. Okay. There's a, Gary, there's an answer to your question. Look at nails more and make judgments <laughs> based on them. For men, is it important to have a, a properly trimmed beard and clean fingernails? I hope so. Yes. 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 Clean fingernails. All, all. Yes. And a, and a thoroughly washed beard. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Sorry if you're having your breakfast at the moment. <laughs> Gilda, just a couple yeah. of quick questions. I know you're going to go. Uh, NHR, that's interesting. We're on target to move January 2022. We'll be contacting Gilda again shortly, uh, re-correct paperwork for NIFS, etc. I am Dutch. Mike is a Brit. So, yes, NHR, it just doesn't apply to um, other than those outside the Schengen area, Magdalena. So I hope that's been helpful to you. And one question of a cultural nature. Uh, where are these clubs? Somebody was asking. I can't find it right now. I think that's... Um... Oh, yeah. It depends from town to town. You have yeah. to look. Okay, so that's part of it anyway, isn't it? It's going to have a wander around your town and your but, village. But every every village has a club. Every. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Very little. Very little. And, and support the Bomberos as well at every chance. Yeah. Right? The Bomberos is part of local life too, and that, that is well worth uh, supporting the firefighters. Gilda, and have this I... is a message. Oh, this is a message. I, I'm very. I'm talking a lot today. Sorry. No, it's fine. I, I just don't want to keep you unnecessarily. It's, it's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> but one tip. It's very important if you are moving to a country that you make part of the community. Oh, yeah. It's very important. Mm -hmm. uh, don't put yourself aside. Um, you know, just be, be among us. Uh, um, you know, uh, try to drink a lot of our culture. Mm, that's uh, great. And, and, and what you said about about the the fire the fire station is very important go to the to the fire station next to you ask if they are needing something um introduce yourself say that now you are living here and you want to help the community somehow it's very important yeah you could take you could take some crates of bottled water. Oh, it's always going to go down well, isn't it, for the firefighters to stay hydrated if they're on a, on a shout or whatever. So, yeah. Or um, the um, I see that the, the things they really want are bottled water and uh, also those, uh, you know, power bars or whatever they, they're called, you know. I can't remember the name of them now, but, you know, a, a snack, a snack to energy bars. That's what they need as well. And also, if you live in a, in a small town and they uh, – 
uh, you can do it in a bigger town also, but it's easier to do it in a in a small town. You can like uh, adopt a, a, a parent or a grandparent because there are many old people all alone. Yes. And and you can go and and visit them when we are not in COVID time. Mm. Um, I, I have this to ask. Important. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much, Gilda. Just one final question then. Um, if port, this is a cross cultural uh, reference and question here. If port with lemonade is a no no, which I think comes as a bit of a disappointment possibly to Pamela, um, how about a cheeky vimto? Do you do you know what a cheeky vimto is? No. I I think it's a it's a really interesting soft drink from from the UK. I think, um, as I recall, cherryish in flavour, but and I think the cheeky is probably um, to put some alcohol in it. I d and I don't know if it's vodka or if you could put port in there. That said, though, I mean, Portonico is a very popular drink now, isn't it? So what do you should you use for that? Should you only use cheap port to go in a Portonico? Should I only... Should you only, use, should, should you only use cheap port? You know this port and tonic drink that, that people... Uh, no, never use cheap port. Don't. <laughs> I thought you might say that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Life is too short to drink Life is too cheap, short cheap wine. Drink. I mean, and it's good and, value. And to, stay, and, and to stay one year without drinking also. You're not over it, are you? And I'm not quite <laughs> myself. But you're more upset about it than I am, and it's me that's doing it. So there we go. Quote of the day to send you on your way from Gilda. Life is too short to drink cheap wine. Perfect yeah. place to park up the conversation for today. You'll be back, of course, next Monday. Gilda, have a great week. Thank you for starting our week. You too. You too. It's, a, it's all always right. a pleasure. And I'm very happy with uh, with all the, the expats community. You know, they are so kind to me. And talking about gifts, everyone knows about gifts because they keep bringing me flowers and chocolates and wine. <laughs> So yeah. I think they already know everything about it. <laughs> but no desserts, no desserts as yet. No desserts yet, yeah. But this, what? but they they are okay because no, actually, actually, I'm I'm wrong because Martin Peak uh, he brought me some some uh, cupcakes, very good <laughs> cupcakes. So excellent. Oh, I I meant to ask you. So. Um, are there any flowers you shouldn't take? Because sometimes, you know, if you go to visit people in hospital, you're not supposed to take red flowers, are you? Or put it, you know, is it chrysanthemums that you're not meant to take to Portuguese people? Did I read that somewhere? I don't know. I'm not aware of that. I'm All not right. a very expert in flowers, so I can't help you with it. Just a nice bouquet of, of mm. flowers. Yeah. What, you, what's your signature dessert? What do you take when you're going to someone's house? Um, I do a very good uh, apple crumble. Do you? That's, that doesn't sound very traditional Portuguese to me. I... No, it isn't. But that's, you know, sometimes we get a little bit sick of the traditional <laughs> Portuguese. I do. I can't believe you said that. No, because the desserts, the Portuguese desserts are very heavy and very sweet. They are very sweet. Know? Very sweet, very sweet. So yeah. if you put the crumble with, with the apple there, it will, it will cut the, the sweet. Very good. I don't think I will ever tire of an Aristos. But I prefer, but I prefer to bring starters. Oh, she, it's a twist. It's a pl a plot twist. Just as we're saying goodbye, <laughs> suddenly yeah. she's going. She's told us the rules, and now she's breaking them herself. <laughs> yeah. Wrong dessert. I and prefer now, to bring starters. Dessert. And what would that be? What sort of starter would you bring? Well, like some olives and some cheese. And, no, uh, a good cheese, uh, um, a good presunto. Yes, okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and I make this, uh, it's, a, it's a, a, a cheesecake, you know, uh, that has jam on it and it yeah. goes to the oven. It's very good. Baked cheesecake. And it's crispy, yeah. Uh, that's a dessert though, right? You're confusing me now. That's not a starter. No, well, it's a starter. It's what? a starter, yeah. A, a starter it's cheese, cheesecake. It's cheese uh, with, um, it's like in an envelope of this, uh, I don't know how to say, yeah, filo pastry. Yeah, filo pastry. Oh, okay. And so it has like some starter. jam on it. Yeah, and then you cut it and it, it's crispy and it's very good. Oh, my goodness. I wish you hadn't said that because that is actually making my stomach rumble. Will you please, <laughs> will you bring the recipe for that next Monday? I will. Maybe, oh. maybe even a picture. 
I should just come and just, just just do the show together and bring it so that we can. Is that Pata Negra? Is that what is that what that's called? Yeah, Pata Negra. Pata yeah. Negra mouth. It really is. That's got me going there, both in my belly and in my mouth there. Oh my word! Wasn't Jill this a Monday about food? It's now it culture, history. food, visas, oh, everything. Stop it, everybody! <laughs> um, I'm so, I've all I got is a little bit of water left here. Um, Gilda, have a great week. Ciao, ciao. You too. Bye, bye, bye. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Bye. Oh, bye. Fantastic, Gilda Pereira from uh, Hey Asesoria Migrant. There. Let me just put the uh, the link to Gilda and the team on the on the uh, in the comments on the screen there. Uh, migration hyphen consulting in our business directory should you need her services cheeky vimto uh, says pam is port with blue wicked now i imagine that would i'd love to see a portuguese person trying that for the first time so this is what you do in britain is it uh, and imagining that the queen might even drink that as a, as a portuguese person being introduced to that for the first time we have got the great mystery of paul mccartney playing in the algov in 1968 i think we've unearthed uh, the correct Photo or a photograph. The, the, I'll tell you the, the story in just a moment. But first, I've got to show you uh, what's happened in um, in the Tejo River just recently. This is beautiful. This is good news. You know, on a Monday, we kind of veer off towards talking about the news because I, I think you have some sort of responsibility to keep on top of global and national affairs here. But we do drag our feet as we move our way towards it each Monday morning. I want to catch up with you. What's new for you as well? Do tell me, please. But look at this. Um, in the Tejo, there's the uh, April 25th bridge, of course. Dolphins spotted it in the river. This, I think, was just only uh, a week. Oh, July the 10th. Fantastic photos from Bernardo Queroz here. Uh, let me just show you all of them that he very kind. Look at that. The Belen Tower on the right in the distance there. And Trafaria. Is, uh, the Trafaria is great. You can get the, the, the uh, ferry over there uh, from, um, what's it called? The ferry port, Caixa de Sodre. Uh, on the Lisbon side, or, or, or the um, you know the city side, go over to Trafaria. Some great restaurants over there. But look at the dolphins frolicking in the game. Oh, he's got a smiley face, haven't they? Dolphins, or so it would seem. I don't know if he's actually happy or not. It just looks happy to me uh, under the April twenty fifth bridge. There, isn't that a beautiful sight? So thank you very much, the Terra Incognita Sailing Academy and Bernardo Queiroz for taking those photographs. He's probably out minding his own business, sailing in the Tejo, and then a pod of dolphins turns up like that. Isn't that fabulous? Absolutely wonderful. Okay, so let's go to your comments. Let's see what you've been up to. Uh, let's see which questions I've missed for Shilda. Um, but thank you, everybody, for your sterling contributions this morning. Um, yes, Friday Night Club is still happening. If Andrew's here, or Gary will be able to give you a link for that, Nigel. Um, and Lisa, yes, so you're not EU. Uh, yes, uh, it looks to me like you do need to speak to Gilda and her team. You can get a, a, a free, not sorry, I beg your pardon. You can get an introductory uh, session with Gilda and the team, uh, which costs 100 euros. It's not free, it's 100 euros um, plus EVA, but you can get a 10% discount on that if you're a premium member. Well worth, I think that's a real fact find and also lets you know what you didn't know, basically. So you can book that up with your team. Tell her who sent you. Um, Gary, what's the best way to become more British and less Portuguese? Sorry, more Portuguese and less British. I hope that was helpful, Gary. Stay tuned, mate. Um, there's this Matt, you're part of the, the solving of the Maca mystery. Um, and Magdalena, we sorted Magdalena out. Uh, Phil Cooklin starting the long drive tonight. Whoop, whoop. And I love that, if I may say so, Phil. You on Facebook, you said, I've only got one key now. And keys are so symbolic, aren't they, of our um, attachment to buildings and maybe our, our own shacklement, if that's the word. And there you were with you. I've only got the one key and it's for the camper van. The, I could smell the adventure coming from the picture there, Phil. Uh, bon voyage, bon voyage. I will cut, and you're going to send postcards from your journey. We're loving this idea, Phil. We're going to get the occasional snapshot and maybe the occasional video or voice recording from Phil along that journey from the UK to Portugal. Isn't that going to be great? Uh, Matthias, I will come to Portugal um, in September for two weeks vac vacation and want to get my NEF then as, as well as a bank account. Good plan, Matthias. Where can I find information about this NHR? I'll tell you what, if you type NHR, uh, you will find that it's all over, all over the internet, uh, the NHR. But speak to children team for specific information on that or ask, search NHR in our forum. 
and you'll get a bit more specific information than likely people who've gone through the process as well, which is always useful. Matthias, Thunder Duck, Carl, I've got shelf space for your unused wine. That's very kind of you, but I'm actually, if I get given any wine, which I did actually on Friday, um, and I hope I'm not breaching a confidence here, but I met with the wonderful Nuno Mendes. We are properly insured for our health now, uh, this household, and he brought me two bottles of um, sweet wine, liqueur wine, uh, from his part of the world. Stubal, Stubal, Stubal. However you say it, um, thank you, Nunu, for that. I'm looking forward to speaking to you again soon. Nunu was great when he was on the show. We're going to get him back because he's a bit of a Bear grills on the QT as well. Um, he, have you seen Along Came Polly? He's he's a mixture. You know the two characters, in, the two male characters in Along Came Polly. You've got Ben Stiller, who's the risk analyst. That is, of course, what Nunu does because he's in the insurance business. But he's also like the Australian fella who's getting his um, life insured with all these dangerous things he does because uh, Nuno is part of the scouting movement here in Portugal, which is very important, actually, in Portuguese culture. And we'll be talking to him live from a scouting event, I think, in September. Looking forward to that. Uh, so he's Bear Grylls and Ben Stiller mixed up in one. Born dear from Capricorn 12. Good morning to you, Capricorn. How are you doing this morning? Uh, would you? Who would dare put red in the fridge? I know. It's it's a terrible habit and should be stopped. And it will not be looked on kindly in Portugal. Be easygoing people, except when you put red in the fridge. Uh, red wine can get hot and it does uh, change the flavor. Yeah, okay, fair, fair point there, Gary. Um, but let's not be chilling that. Let's just bring it to the right temperature, right? Uh, Non-EU. Okay, Lisa, I think we've helped you there. Let me know if we haven't. Uh, what if I live in Germany and moving to Portugal? I am American. Okay, so you are American. Um, you, the Schengen Agreement will not apply to you unless you do have a German passport, if you manage to do that, Amara, okay? Otherwise, it's D7 most likely for you. Other Ds are available. Sending off for a signed photo of Macca. So I can put it up on the dartboard. I think I can help there, Gary. Stay tuned. Uh, we were traveling near Monchique, and sadly, the smell of burnt grass was apparent. And you don't mean like at the Vashko Tagama shopping center. Not that smell of burnt grass that I can smell up there, you naughty students. You're talking about, sadly, the uh, fires uh, or the, the, the big fire over the weekend. Uh, pretty grim scenes coming from there. Hopefully, they've got it under control now. Uh, Fogush.pt. I'll put that in the... Um, in the comments because that's what you need uh, to, this is it's a very good resource uh, for keeping you in touch with where the fires are so you can stay safe yourself and keep uh, keep updated on on the state of fires in portugal but that's uh, yeah awful when you can smell that very spooky uh, the north of the algarve is beautiful and very green with lovely valleys says paul <laughs> give it a rest paul about the algarve actually don't keep singing its praises it's lovely to hear it um is it possible to get a residence visa without going back to the us um, I I think you have to leave the country, strange. I'm not sure about that. And again, you know, I'm not the expert. Um, I am merely a, a, a signposter, Amara. So, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that the team will answer that by email just to kick off the proceedings. Any any help you need with that, let me know. Uh, Pamela, yes, Cheeky Vimto. We, we now know what's in a Cheeky Vimto. And we will take, have photographs of Portuguese people trying cheeky vimptos, hopefully, in due course. Um, in Portugal, I'm seen as reserved and quiet. In Finland, I'm seen as an extra. Isn't that interesting, Elra? And, and so so possible. Uh, Lonnie McLaughlin, everybody, he's here. He's among us. Bon dia, Carl and Gilda. Had a most amazing conversation with Lonnie. Great to have you here this morning, Lonnie. Because I think normally you're gonna you're watching this on the replay, aren't you? Submitted my D7 visa, thanks to both of you. Now in Porto for one month as a tourist and will be settled here soon. So obviously able to tune in. Now we're in the same time zone. If you're coming to the Silver Coast, Lonnie, I would love to have a glass of water with you. <laughs> That's... Um, Thank you so much for, for chipping in this morning. And I'll pass your message on to uh, to Gilda there. That's a great idea, the coffee shop thing. Is it acceptable to sit in a coffee shop and work on a laptop? Yes, if you buy some coffee. Uh, I mean, come on. Those folks, and I, I, I know who you are, and some of you have even outed yourselves to me as sitting in coffee shops all day without buying the coffee. Don't do that. I mean, it's not like it's Starbucks, is it, where you've got to pay like several quid or euro or dollars to get a coffee. I mean, I would say buy a coffee every 30 minutes you're in there at least. Get some toast, you know, in exchange for the lovely atmosphere and facilities. Make sure you put some money in the pockets of the cafe owner. I think it's thoroughly acceptable, Louise, um, as long as that um, condition, condition of Carl, <laughs> is um, honoured there. Question for Gilda, but you know that, Louise. Uh, that wasn't aimed at you, by the way. Question for Gilda. We have the house in the Algarve, uh, Silvish. Can I do the D7 there? 
as I am here for two weeks now, then back in September for three months. I've already done six weeks this year. Um, far too technical for me. And sorry, I didn't get that to Gilda. We got distracted, didn't we? But that's that. take that to the team, Nigel. Again, if you need an introduction, let me know. Um, I'm going to Panish for two weeks to meet locals to practice speaking Portuguese. Excellent. Pete and Jackson, that's the way to do it. Jump in. You will get a warm welcome. Uh, we have elderly parents, one with terminal cancer. Sorry to hear that, uh, Nigel, in the UK, but also want my driving license. So it has to be done by the end of the year. Yeah, complex with the driving, isn't it? Uh, and let us know how you get on with that. Let us know what help you need with that as well, Nigel, with this crazy driving license business. Uh, I recommend volunteering to make friends. And, of course, if you watch uh, Pam's interview on the show here, she tells you all about it. That's a great episode. Um, search, I think, it, on our YouTube channel, if you search volunteering in Portugal, you'll find that. And it's a great interview and, and a lovely insight into, into the great benefits uh, Pamela has experienced and the great benefits she's given the community, actually, by being a volunteer. Introducing your neighbours, uh, yourself to your neighbours, is something we do also where I grew up in Germany, in Fultz. Uh, says Matthias. It is. It's good manners. It's good Good breeding, good culture, that. Uh, also, going to classes is good for meeting people. I've been to dance classes and art classes. Thank you for that. Making friends, becoming more Portuguese. My neighbours are great, have been really helpful in sorting things for the house. Yeah, always happy to help. You know, there's always, someone's going to turn up with a toolkit if you're in trouble or a snake charming kit or whatever it is you might need um, and laugh at the little snake that you said, ah, there's a massive snake in my house. And they'll turn up and say, oh, is that it? I've brought something for that. Oh, I'm, I'm holding up my green fly swat, which doesn't work well on the green screen. That's interesting, isn't it? Oh, magic tricks. Back with more magic later. Um, okay, uh, I noticed that in Venezuela, when I was living there, nails, very important to have them polished beautifully. Okay, very interesting. So, yeah, you heard that. Oh, dear, says Louise, though, I barely run a brush through my hair and went to a nail bar once and never again. Uh, I'm not going to fit in. You're going to be fine. Um, did you see those? If you're a Facebook friend of mine, you'll have seen those shoes that look like feet. That, they're like foot gloves. Um, surely we can get those for the right occasions for the hands as well, like a pair of, you know, matching your own flesh color with beautifully manicured nails. Just slide them on for the right occasion. If that isn't being done, maybe that's one for the cockerel's coop tomorrow um, for the dragon's den type people to invest in. Um, I'm going to say here, Deborah, that you're stuck. Uh, I can't have long nails due to the job I do. Again, the same gloves for you. I think we've got two customers already. They get in the way when I'm holding power drills and saws. You're excused. Wow. Um, firefighters in Portugal are volunteers, so they appreciate the help, says Elra. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, thank you, Gilda from Dominique. Absolutely. Always thanks to Gilda. Isn't she amazing? Uh, when I was still in Portugal, when eating out, I would always choose international cuisine. It was only after I left that whenever I go back, I always go for traditional food. I'm not sure I understand that. Hold on a minute. Uh, choose international. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, fair enough. Um, yes. I guess you're a lo you were a local. So you, when you were going out, you want to try something a bit different. And then now you're coming back, having been away, the prodigal returns and ask for the traditional food. Isn't that amazing? Um, Pete and Jackson, baked camembert, yes, or pata negra, mouth-watering. Marvellous. Uh, Carl is fully integrated in the culture, only talks about food, yes. Andrew is here. Uh, Andrew, I think Nigel needs the link to the new man cave. Congra congratulations, fellas, on, uh, on successfully handling my baton um, and taking, taking care of that. Really appreciate it. It's a man cave joke there. Uh, Friday night is alive. Thanks to the community. Absolutely. Viva Forza, the man cave. Brilliant job, Andrew, and, uh, and those men who were um, alongside him, the band of brothers. Uh, bon, dia, dia, bon dia, povo. Actually, a new greeting I want to share with you. I'm seeing this more and more. Portuguese people say viva as well, which is that like hi or greetings. Uh, Margarita is here. Um, saying hello to everybody from the same household there, I think. Uh, Nigel, search Portuglish YouTube channel for the Man Cave. Man Cave Reloaded, there you go. Uh, Gilda is still here. I'm jealous about the wine, <laughs> says Gilda. Uh, we tried uh, Vino d'Italia. Incredible. It's, that's not butcher's wine, is it? Because that's Talio. Uh, but Margarita, thanks for that little tip. Write that down if you're a wine fan. Vino d'Italia there. And uh, Fogos.pt, that's how to keep track of the fires and what's going on, staying safe. 
and updates on fires in action and under control. Um, I think you should talk to the US embassy and see if they can help you. Always good to start, yes, with, with your embassy or your consulate. Uh, cheeky Vimto's nice but quite deadly. Vimto on ice, there's a refreshing drink. Uh, Johnny, born the Alegria Torres from sunny Panama Core. Look at that. It used to be Belgium. Now it's Panama Core. I'm always an hour late for the show this week. Uh, it's an hour earlier than in Belgium. She's still in the habit, of course. Um, Dominic, you are taking up space and using their Wi-Fi. It's only good manners. Exactly, Dominic. That's exactly what I feel. Buy a coffee. Even if you don't drink it, you could still buy it, couldn't you? Or say, can I give you... Actually, I think Portuguese cafe owners wouldn't let you pay like that. Just just get a takeaway cake or do something like that if you don't feel like a coffee. Uh, get a cakes, para lavar, box of cakes, yeah. But do the necessary there. Uh, been here less than 36 hours and couldn't last without tasting the wine. So much for my abstinence attempt, at least for now. That didn't go very well, Lolly. I'm not going out with you. If your will is as weak as that, you're going to lead me astray. Uh, did you have another encounter with the Javalis lately? Ah, yes. Uh, wild boar update. Um, some of the men here were laughing at me. Ooh, ran away from a little piggy, did we? And I tell you, the, the, the sound of it in the valley, it was like Jurassic Park, I kid you not, and I did have to run. And the, I looked at the dog, the dog looked at me, and we, in, in sort of man-dog understanding, we looked at each other and we thought to each other, we're going to have to run here, this is the only thing to do. And we left the little terrier behind to sort things out, and me and the bigger dog ran away at great speed, passing Usain Bolt on the way. Um, nothing further to report. Mrs. M is very uncomfortable about me going out at the moment. But I spoke to um, Manel, uh, BFF Manel here, and he said, you know, there's nothing to worry about. So I am reassured, and I think it was a bit of a one-off. I think they'd returned to the scene of the carnage and the crime, but nothing nothing to report. But I do take a stick with me now. Not that that would do me much much good, but I just feel a little bit better for having that with me. Um, nice to know. it's an, Thank you for asking, Margarita. Nice to know it's an acceptable thing to introduce ourselves to our neighbours. We've just moved, and I was wondering if our Portuguese neighbours would find it intrusive. So certainly not. Take cakes, take wine, um, take anything. No, not anything. Take something good that you think they might like. Uh, maybe maybe wait for the second or third meeting before you introduce the cheeky Vimto to them. Uh, what have I missed about driving licenses? This is um, people swapping their British. What you're meant to do is, swap, if you're British, you swap your British license for a Portuguese one. Uh, that does cause problems and is ongoing for a number of people here. Portuguese reporting in officially. Good morning, everyone, with some hearts there. Thank you very much. Tune in this week for more verbal dog fights. Um, oh, is that uh, in the man cave? Yep. Uh, found it. So a trip to the man cave Friday and arrive at Faro Saturday 24th. It's a warm up. Um, dare I say a little bit of foreplay for you there, Nigel. Uh, Portuguese style. Shocking hangover after Friday night. Good chats with the lads. Join the expats man cave page for updates. There you go. Uh, brilliant to see that uh, spinning off beautifully there. Bon dia, Carl. As a single guy, what is the proper and respectful way to make the acquaintance of Portuguese ladies? Very good question, Sean, and a and, and good man for asking in that way. I think you um, hold your hand out and delicately take their hand and then pull it towards your face and give it a, a kiss, a, a French style, like a liaison dangereux, and say, enchanté, enchanté, mademoiselle or madame. Actually, don't do any of that. But I, don't, we all, don't all us men dream of that, of, of taking in the fragrance of a perfumed glove? and saying enchanté, or is it just me? Maybe it's just me. Uh, Sean, there are better men and women, I suspect, uh, uh, capable of answering that question. But yes, I think respectful is the way forward there. Um, so do you mean as in where, what's a good place to, to, to meet ladies and then how to approach? It sounds like we're going back to the court of old, doesn't it? Uh, but I, I, we, we have to we have to pursue that, Sean. Sure. Thank you. That's an excellent question, and I think some some um, answers will be forthcoming in due course. And we could ask, always carry it forward to Gilda. Gilda will know, won't she? Ask Andrew. Be a British gentleman, not during a pan. Okay, yes, it was a joke. Don't kiss anyone's hand, gloved or not. Or maybe do it through the mask. I don't know. It was a joke. It was a joke. It was a joke. I've got myself into some trouble there. Um, if you if you want to be friends with Portuguese women, you need to meet her friends first. There we go. I told you somebody would be far more intelligent than I was in answering that question. That is perfect, isn't it? And, and establish yourself. It's like Jane Austen times, isn't it? Establish yourself as a new and available young gentleman of great wealth. And um, 
what, what were the word? A flamboyance, possibly, uh, who is new on the scene and, yes, meet with Portuguese women, the mar married, married ones, work colleagues, and they will introduce you to their single friends. Isn't that great? Elra, genius. Yes and yes. <laughs> okay. Um, picking up a lady's hand and saying, your nails need doing, love, uh, is not going to work. Is not going to work. So we've got Gary here. And we're into the last few minutes. We are able to solve a mystery now. Hope that helps for now, Sean. But I think we're going to return to that, aren't we? Um, I need to find the source of this story, which I've squirreled away. Who else here has thousands of things in their saved items thing on Facebook and never looks at them? You feel slightly better. It's like collecting books that you never read, isn't it? So I have, um, oh, here it is. Penina offers award for 1968 photo of of um maca okay so this this beatles fans beatles unfans uh maca maca detractors if i could call you that which applies to garvo but i have i have information um that uh, is contrary to what you what you say about mr mccartney and this if i can just bring this story up um if it will show itself there we go yeah panina offers reward for photo of paul mccartney um performing at a hotel in 1968 okay so here it is here's the news article which really i thought i thought this is fascinating um so the panina hotel in portima is offering a three-night stay to anyone who has a photo of the pack your bags gary uh who anyone who has a photo of the iconic moment paul mccartney performed an impromptu song at the hotel in december 1968 oh what a night Oh, no, that was 63, wasn't it? The story has been told by locals for decades, and according to Panina, there's also evidence that confirms Paul McCartney's historic presence at Panina Hotel for a solo live performance during the height of the Beatles' fame. Having even written a song called Panina, I just met a girl called Pernina. That's somebody else, isn't it? But I wonder what a, a Beatles song about Panina would sound like. It, all that is missing is the photo for posterity, the hotel adds. The iconic evening started when Paul McCartney was on holiday in the Algarve in December 68. He is said to have entered the hotel at around 1.30 a.m. to exchange five pounds for Eskudosh, the national currency at the time. He then decided, hey, are you right there? Can you change this five quid note for some Eskudosh? He then decided to visit the hotel's bar where the resident band Jota Hera were performing. Band members recognized the singer and asked him to join them. Come on, Paul, come on down, join us. The bar, which was half empty and almost closing, quickly filled up. Yeah, as word got round the village, right, with guests and staff who were in, overjoyed to see the world-famous musician singing an impromptu song while playing the piano. The party continued late into the night around 4 a.m. and saw McCartney come up with this iconic Penina song, which he then offered to Jota Hera, who ended up recording it. Says the hotel, it's the only song by Paul McCartney as a member of the Beatles that was not recorded by the band. Unfortunately, there aren't any photographs of that historic moment at the hotel. But as the bar was filled with guests and staff, there is hope that someone may have taken a photograph. It adds, JJW Hotels and Resorts, owner of the hotel, is offering a three-night stay to anyone who has a photo and sends it to the hotel. Well, I have to say, the mystery is now solved. Gary, pack your bags. Here we go, mate. We have unearthed that photograph of you. With Macca at the hotel. Look at this in the hotel lobby. Paul McCartney on the left and Gary Austin looking pretty good in 1968 there. Look at that. So we should send this in. Pack your bags, buddy. We're going to the Algarve for, for a three night stay. Um, I'll send this in later on to them. How about that? Okay, final comments then. Penny and Elaine. <laughs> He just ripped off one of their existing songs. Penina Lane, you're in my ears and in my mind. Oh, okay, hold on. Uh, where are we there? Um, Sean Patterson getting some thumbs up. That's great. You don't meet the girls' friends first. They <laughs> will block you, not me. My boyfriend, says Elra. I'm not sure that's in, in conjunction with Elra. Uh, thank you, Gilda and Carl. Uh, so he goes out on holiday and still has to make a statement. Sad. Come on, get over it, man. We're going to get a free holiday here. Good morning. As an introvert, introducing myself to neighbours is a struggle, but something I need to do. What time of day is best, do you think? Honeymoon always, four in the morning, because Portuguese people are still up partying. Uh, Nigel, only joking again. I can honestly say I have more friends now in 18 months in Portugal than I have in the UK. Portuguese, German, Dutch, and English winter is great. Amazing, isn't that great to know? And Penina Lane. Uh, John Rooney, you're a funny guy. Um, he's the one who came up with keeping up with the Kaldashians, and there he is with a 
hoot of a of a of a of a quick sting of a gag there, Penina Lane. Uh, keep those coming, but we got to go. Uh, maybe we'll continue that tomorrow. But look, we're on our way to the Algarv Garvo. Thanks to you and this this cheeky snap from night. Do you think we'll get away with that? I don't know. Okay, folks, uh, have a great day. Bye for now. We'll see you in the morning. And uh, let's go to this wonderful outro of wonderful things you can do in Portugal. Sometime soon, hopefully. (laughs)